Hi there, and welcome back to the Lally. A while ago, we looked at how to use an ESP8266 node MCU as a Wi-Fi repeater. This allowed us to extend the range of any existing Wi-Fi network. In today's video, we will look at how to use an ESP32 instead. According to the documentation of the repeater firmware on GitHub, the ESP8266 has about 5 megabits per second as bandwidth, while the ESP32 has at least 15 megabits per second. That is three times more. Just like in the previous video, there is no coding or programming involved in converting this board into a repeater. But we need two things. We need the firmware and then the flashing tool for uploading the firmware. So let's go ahead and download them. First, we need to open up a browser and then go to the Expressive website. On the Expressive website, we scroll down here to the Flash Download Tools. So this is the tool we want. So we'll just go ahead and click the download button at the far right based on how fast your internet is it's going to take a while to finish so now this is done let's go ahead and download the firmware for that we'll head over to github so over here on github we'll come here to code and then download the zip file of the entire repo as soon as that is done we can go to the folder where this was downloaded to so here are the files we downloaded this is the firmware and this is the flashing tool so let's go ahead and extract both files. Okay, so we have both files extracted here. So let's run the flashing tool. So we open the folder and then we run the flash download tool. Let's minimize this. So we see this black CMD interface and then after a while this pops up. We click developer mode and then we go down to ESP32 download tool. And then and then we have this interface. So this is where we add our firmware or binary files. First we need to click this button here and it will bring us to this download folder. So here we select the ESP folder we go to build and then first we have to upload the bootloader first so when you add it you see this green showing here and then we go to the next line and then we go to the next file in line and then we select this and then that is also added and then the third one we select the partitions example so now we've added all three we also need to specify where they are so we need to go ahead and indicate that also so we go for zero x 1000 um, that is just a hex address indicating where the files are so so for the next one we write 0 x 10,000 and then for the last one we write 0 x 8,000 so the last thing we need to do is give the software the go ahead to upload these files for that we need to tick these boxes here at the ends as soon as we do that we realize that these boxes also change to green if yours doesn't change to green then it means that you've probably done something wrong well we will leave the rest of these settings at their default at where they are right now so we have 40 megahertz here we have dio here for the spi mode and then we have 32 megabit for the flash size at this point we have to select the com port our esp32 is at but we've not connected the esp to our pc yet so let's go ahead and do that we can use a standard micro usb cable so we connect this part to the pc and this part to the esp now after connecting our esp we can see there is a com port 9 so we select that and then with the board rate we drop it to 576000 so that is that and then from here we can click start after about 10 seconds of clicking start if you don't see any green line loading here go back to this console interface here and then take a look at what is happening here if there is a bunch of full stops and dashes being printed that means that your ESP32 isn't inside flash mode so we need to put it inside flash mode so to do that we just need to press and hold this boot button here and then we'll click start so you have to stop the whole process and then you will see this fail notice here don't worry about that it's all good and then we go back and then we press and hold this button and then we click start and then this time around we can see a bunch of things happening and then we can see something showing up here in this window and then the green line starts loading down here
you see the finish sign here which means that everything is done so now you can take your finger off the boot button and then you restart by disconnecting the usb and connecting it again and then let's go to the wi-fi menu and then over here you can see esp32 nat router this is the esp32 showing up here with its own access point so this is open by default so we just go ahead and connect to it this could take a while and as soon as it's done connecting let's open a browser and configure it we visit the ip address 192.168.4.1 and then you press enter this is the interface of our wi-fi repeater this here is where we enter the credentials of the wi-fi that we are trying to extend for me i'm home so i want to extend my home network the name of my router is delali the password for that router is this right here and then i'll click connect after a while it should connect to the lally so this is the already existing wi-fi i'm trying to extend after connecting to the lally it pops back up here so over here you can change your access point name i would leave it at esp32 nat router and then i would make the password the same as this one just so i don't have to struggle remembering a new password so i'll just go ahead and paste this here so i'll click set here also and then after a while that should also come back online okay so when we check here we can see that it's disconnected because this time around it has a password so we would not be able to connect to it we'll click this and then we'll click connect and then we'll paste the password and then we'll click next in order to prevent our PCs from making an update while we are on this network, we'll just go to properties and then we'll scroll down and then set as meted connection. Okay, so that is that. It is connected to our new access point. Also notice that if you enter any access point password that is less than 8 characters, the access point will be open so anybody can join. So now let's go ahead and stream something and see how well this network does. Just checking to make sure that it is still connected to the repeater network um, which is ESP32 NAT router and then we go off to YouTube to our channel and watch some video there and see if it actually loads well. So let's go and play this video and see how well it does. So this takes a while to start, but as it starts, you can see the buffer here move at a very steady pace. Let's just make sure this is playing at full HD and the buffer still keeps working and the video plays fluid. So that means that everything is okay. So from here, let's go ahead and do a bandwidth test. So we'll go here and then type internet speed test. And then we'll click this blue button here and then just wait. Um, let's go ahead and test the actual default network we repeated and see how well that does. Okay, so we'll run the test again. Okay, so once again, we can see the results from that test. If you learned something new here today, kindly give us a thumbs up to show your support for this channel. If you are new here, kindly subscribe to stay in touch on how to design and build more cool stuff. See you next time.